Any questions for? Assalamualaikum, Sayyidi. Alaykum as salam rahmatullah. Can we renew our bayah? Here we go. <laughs> <coughs> <clears throat> this this bayad always with the intention to Sultan and Awliya Mashay Muhammad Nazim Haqqani, Sultan and Awliya Mashaykh Abdul Faiz Dagestani, Mashaykh Muhammad Adil, the 41st Shaykh of Naqshbandiya Tal Aliyah. And with the blessings of Awliya Allah like Mawlana Shaykh Hisham and Shaykh Adnan, inshaAllah. Fa'awuzu billahi min shaitanir rajeem, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. Inna ladina yubayyunuka, inna ma yubayyunullah. Ya Allahi fawka aydihim faman naqadu fa inna ma yaghuthu ala nafsi wa man awfa bima ahad alayhu Allah fa sayyatun ajran azeem radina billahi rabban wa islami deenan wa ba Sayyidina Muhammadun sallallahu alayhi wa sallam rasoolun wa nabiyun wa ba Qur'ani kitaban wa Allahumma naqulu wa keel wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Aqibinna bi Sayyidina Sultan al-Awliya ma Shaykh Muhammad Nazim Haqqani, Shaykhuna wa Murshidina wa ma Shaykh Muhammad Adil, Shaykhuna wa Murshidina. Fi barakat awliya Allah, Mawlana Shaykh al-Sham Kabani, Shaykh Adnan Kabani, Ustazina. Wallahumma naqulu wakeel, Allahu, Allahu, Allahu Haqq, Allahu, Allahu, Allahu Haqq, Allahu, Allahu, Allahu Haqq. Haqqu ya Rabbi illa sharaf al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam alayhi wa sahbihi kiram wa la mashaykhina fi tariqatul nashbandiyyat al-aliyya khasatan ruh imam tariqa gawta khaliqa shah nashband Muhammad Waisi al-Bukhari, Sultan Awliya Shaykh Abdul Faiz al-Daqistani, Sultan Awliya Shaykh Muhammad Nazim Adil Haqqani, Mawlana Shaykh al-Sham Kabani, Shaykh Adnan Kabani, Shaykh Muhammad Adil, Ma'abdi Khaliq al-Khushdawani, Sahib Zaman Sayyid Muhammad al-Mahdi alayhi salam, Ruhullah Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam, Sayyifullah Sayyidina alayhi salam, Thumma Sabaqa Siddiq, Sayyidina Umma, Sayyidina Uthman, Imam al-Hassan alayhi salam, Imam al-Husayn alayhi salam, Sayyidatina Fatima al-Tizar alayhi salam, Wa Sayyir wa Saudatina wa Siddiqina al-Fatiha. Barakat Shafat Ya Rasul al-Kareem, Aghdatim al-Lisan. <clears throat> uh, as alaikum dear Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah Will Dajjal and his people try their best to take down the Mahdi and cause harm and problems for people standing for truth before the arrival of the Mahdi? If Dajjal could he would have killed everyone. But Allah, Allahu Akbar, <laughs> that's, that's what we described on on the, the fitna of Dajjal, there's videos that the guys put out that he would go back into the timelines of people and would kill them and their descendants so that they would not appear. And that's why Allah used in Islam very beatific words that were immense realities. So for awliya and those whom following awliya Allah, he called them mafuz. Masumin, they are completely infallible and guarded and locked. Mahfuz, whom Allah has granted uh, to guard them and protect them. And they're not only mafuz that they make sins and Allah will wipe them and clean them because He describes that in Surah Al Fatiha. Yansurkullah, na, what? Inna taqaddam and dambika ta'akhar yutema nehmatuhu alayka fi sirat al mustaqeema. We'll clean in front of you and we'll clean behind you and we'll make for you a complete sirat al mustaqeem. So Allah is saying, We're going to do all of that for you. Wa yasuruk Allahu nasu al aziza. But mafuz is that we're also going to encrypt your lineage. Because for, for us to understand, it's a computer code already written by Allah. There's line items in the code that programmers can go and manipulate. But the core of the code is encrypted by Allah that they can't go into those files. So that's what mahfuz is. Not only the sins but if not for Allah naming it mahfuz then we could have all been obliterated. 
soon as he, ha- he figured out who's going to be with Sayyidina Mahdi he would have destroyed everything. But Allah plans, Allah wrote the whole plan. So no, he can only touch what he deems he thinks he can touch, the rest is in Allah's hands. That's why the, the whole concept of fear is not to fear devils and not to, to fear as if the devil has the power. The only power is in Allah What you have to fear is if Allah going to protect you or not. So that's the focus. Not if the devil is going to eat you, but if Allah is going to protect us. That's why then you see the whole focus of these teachings is based on getting protected by Allah All 25 years of our teaching it's based on that reality. Not that the devil can hurt you, but is Allah going to step up and protect you? And for what? Why? When you have a difficulty and you're calling out for Allah why is He going to answer? Maybe it's, no, maybe you need punishment at that time, why should I answer? Many people crying in the hospital, screaming as a matter of fact, if you go to emergency room, you hear everybody screaming, crying, calling for mom, dad, uncle, somebody. So the whole of these years of teachings and tariqah teachings was to gain Allah's rida and satisfaction. Illayanta maqsudi wa ridat matloob. And the secret of that was that love whom I love, that'll be the only credit in your account. Allah going to look to my Ramadan and so I'm going to save you because of you had an immense Ramadan? No. We're all making filled with mistakes. Allah said, I'm going to intercede for you because you love someone whom I love very much. Your love for Sayyidina Muhammad Not only that but Prophet says, I take your case. The love you show for me, when you're tired and you come for mafil and you're tired and say, ah, I'll turn it on, no I'll go to sleep, no I'll turn it on. When you struggle in the way of love, don't think it's not recognized by Prophet Anybody could be out working, sleeping, doing something other than ibadah, worshipness and, and listening to mafils and zikrs. But when people do those things out of ishq and love, we gain the nazar of Prophet You give a well, you put water, you have a mawlid, there are people whom emailing, I don't have much yet, I want to sponsor this mawlid, I want to sponsor this Ramadan. They don't have but they're doing, they're getting the nazar of Prophet not nazar of me, what I'm going to do for people. I'm just the means in which to teach you that when we do these things, Prophet same thing, it's not going unnoticed. You have a hisab, you have a hisab so that when these difficulties are coming that this ishq and muhabbat, now Allah is the defender. When Allah in Ayat Kareem says, I am the defender of my awliya, they don't need anyone else, I will defend and start taking their case. And that's why Allah said, don't come against my awliya and I'll declare war against you. And all ulama came and said, we have no reference in which Allah will declare war against anyone for any sin. But He did describe, if you came against my awliya, I'll declare war against you. He didn't say, if you conquer this land, I declare war against you. If you steal from this guy, I declare war against you. He said, if you come against my awliya, I will declare war against you. So it means this is an immense protection. So then how to make ourselves from awliyaullah is to be the lovers of Sayyidina Muhammad Have good character, have ishq, have good, good, good khuluq and akhlaq, good character. And by example and by reality that we actually, our deeds and our actions are matching. And then Allah count them amongst those whom are dear and near to Him. And that becomes our protection in last days. When we know Allah is behind and above and all around us and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad how we described at the beginning is that you're making durud the sharif you feel the fragrance of Prophet all around you. And every time you have a difficulty that hand comes and begins to open something, 
so that you're a najat and, and a relief from that difficulty, inshaAllah. <coughs> Assalamualaikum Sayyidi. Alaykum as salam wa rahmatullah. So what is the strongest way to respond when being attacked by a powerful shayateen? I think we just described the whole night was that. <laughs> is that keep making the ru the sharif. Keep doing all your practices. Make sure that you're, you're, you're strong on your connection. Those attacks <coughs> if Allah allows are like a sparring. They let somebody into your room and begin fighting you. So it has to be by permission. So Allah just says in Qur'an, when shaitan wants to attack you, it's by what? Izzatullah, Izzat al-Rasul, Izzat al-Mu'mineen. He has to take three permissions before he attacks you. He can't come and do whatever he wants. So it's by a permission that that's coming. So that means we must be then in a position of training, something went wrong. <coughs> Excuse me. Something went wrong. What did I miss? Did I, did I not do my awrah? Did, did, did I go somewhere and something happened? I go back, I wash, make my wudu, make my salawats, build my connection with my muraqabah and then build, build, build until I can find where this energy is coming from and how to defend myself against the energy. Because until it comes, people don't take it serious. So we have kids, we have family, as soon as you tell the kids, don't do these things, energy is going to attack you. Well, you always say that, you always say that. Nothing as sweet as when Allah opens energy for somebody, right? They say, Bob, I feel something's grabbing my neck and choking me. I say, oh, so now you believe? What do you want me to do? Let him choke you. He say, no, no, come on, make du'a, make du'a. <laughs> Then he said, okay, now you believe? Yeah. Something bite your foot in the middle of the night, what happened? Now you believe. You thought it was a joke? No. You burn your isfan, you get your du'a, make sure you have wudu, keep your taweez on or these guys, they're going to keep coming after you. They're going to bite you every night. They're going to do all sorts of things to you. So this is a big blessing if Allah grant the person to feel from the heavenly kingdom. That this unseen kingdom is everywhere and so I should govern myself accordingly. That's why people who don't experience that can't understand the taqwa of the shaykhs. The real shaykhs they feel, if their eyes are not clean they're going to be attacked. So they're continuously looking down, they're continuously worried about energy, they're continuously in wudu. If they go out from a washroom without wudu, Eh, they're going to be sick in a matter of a day. They'll have horrific energies attacking them where their body, their legs and everything will be in difficulty. Because this energy all it needs to do is begin to crawl up the leg and they begin to have vascular difficulties in their legs. So it's very real. So they live and die by their wudu. They don't play with it. They don't let it to be lost and so I oh, don't have time to make wudu. They don't have time to be pain and suffering. So as a result their life is real, they practice it, they live by it and they, they're armoured for spiritual battle at every moment inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaykum as salaam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Is it true that the Ummah of Sayyidina Muhammad will not exceed 1500 years Hijri? There are calculations that Mawlana Shaykh would make that there's this and that and 30 more years and 25 <laughs> more years and this, these are all nice. But for me and you think that we're not going to live past tomorrow. So Imam Ali Salam said, imagine you're going to live forever so that you have to work every day and at night time that tomorrow Qiyamah is coming. So by day, oh this day is going to go forever, I work hard. And by night time the fear that maybe tomorrow or in the middle of night uh, atomic bomb is coming and this whole world is going to be finished. So then they spent their night in worshipness and they struggled hard in the day for their work. So don't look to when the finish line is coming, think the finish line is right in front of you because then that, that reality opens for you. You're not trying to second guess Allah so the difference is, oh it's 40 years away therefore I can make 40 years of sins. 
right? Why would you want to know if it's 40 years away? But if you say, no, it's actually maybe coming tomorrow. Maybe Russia is going to launch something. We said before, North Korea may be firing something towards California. He just tested something. Russia may be coming through Alaska. And I think people had dreams when we first came here mm -hmm. that they would be invading through Alaska. It's 70 mile stretch. They get on one rubber boat, they're on this side. Yeah? So then why are you worried about 50 years from now? Tomorrow is coming. So then at night we make our zikr, make our awrat, connection, ya Rabbi, before I lay myself to, to, to sleep, I pray for you my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray for you my soul to take. <laughs> yeah. So our life is, is right now, it's live. This TV is going live, all the teachings are live. Day by day you're seeing hadith, Bani As, As, Asfar would make deals with the Muslims and the hadith the Prophet described that they would betray the Muslims. So first they had to make deals with them for them to later on betray them. Well, we're right there now. They're making deals with them all over the, all over the world. We're here, is we're watching hadith on news. Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi Wa alaikum salam rahmatullah Do all salawats and durood have a jamali tajalli or are there some that contain both jamali and jalali? No definitely jamali and jalali, they're all mixed. There are the lights of Prophet that are very jalali and those are meant for expansions. And there are salawats that are very jamali and beatific and those are meant for divinely grace and lights and blessings. The other one are blessings too, but more for, for building. Excuse me. As alaikum Sayyidi. Wa alaikum as salam wa uh, Shaykh Pir Sahib, is Hasad bad nazar more than black magic? <coughs> If person with good intention also gets bad nazar, does bad nazar affect on person? How do we get rid of it? Wudu? Bad nazar and hasad? More than black magic. <clears throat> hasad and magic different. That the hasad is an enmity and jealousy that can be coming to you known and unknown. And that's why you guard yourself as an energy battle. So in our teachings you put taweez, you have your ring, you, you deflect yourself, be humble, show yourself as nothing. These are your protections. Walk with your eyes down. Recently you go out and people want to look at everyone. They want to look at your face. They want to look at someone's face. Then the f they, that person look back at their face. All these trainings were protection because as soon as you look up then the energy of people are hitting you. So the person could be hungry, could not be healthy, could not be a, a, as, as, as well as you and they look at you without even a, a bad intention or with a bad intention and arrows of energy are coming out and they're affecting you. And they see what you have, they send energy and it affects you. So these are a direct day-to-day -day energy battle. So by protecting ourselves and defending ourselves, we are shielding ourselves from these types of energies. So th that's energy training. Walk with our eyes down, keep the taweez, make sure I have complete wudu, keep low profile, humble life. And we're deflecting energies all the time. If we go out and look up at everywhere we go, all day long they're going to be attacking the eyes. And other, other beings will be shooting arrows, so they shoot arrows. They sit from a distance and they see a believer and they pow, they fire an arrow right into their eyes and into their head and they have immense difficulties and pains and, and all sorts of horrific events. That's just hasad. 
So that's why the concept of the, the blue. So when people didn't understand it, they said, oh, what's this evil eye? Oh, this can't do anything, only Allah protects you. But that wasn't the understanding. Allah gave us a brain to understand these realities and to understand the realities of colors and reflection and deflection. So as soon as you put a blue, instead of a target coming to you and somebody shoot you in the head with the target, you go like this. And Allah made blue to be attractive to people. So as soon as the blue comes up, their eyes look at the blue and that caught the arrow, not you. And they do it now in, in, in warfare. They put a dummy flare so that you shoot here and not their engine. Because if there's heat seeking on an engine, comes at the engine, right? So when they want, don't want their engine to be hit, they shoot a flare. Then the, the dummy comes towards the flare and goes there. Well, Allah gave us more understanding than the military. The Allahs are adjusting, the, the shaitans are shooting arrows at your eyes, deflect them. So colors have a reality. Blue catches the eyes of people. As soon as you wear the blue, it, it catches the nazar of somebody there, not onto your eyes. That was the reality of nazar. Black magic, somebody is sitting and planning things against you. Allah is your defender. So not to worry about who's doing the magic, how I'm going to… you spending your energy the wrong direction. So we don't worry about magic, we just do our awrads. So as soon as you do your awrad, do your meditation, that's the resolution for all of those things. Because as soon as you meditate and contemplate, you begin to have the connection from the shaykhs, right? All of a sudden the shaykh will begin to appear in a dream that, take this out of your house, take that out of your house. You didn't need to know about magic. As soon as you did your muraqabah, did your zikr, did your practices, the information will begin to come to you of where there's problems in your life. And that's the best, not to think of where I'm going to fix, who am I going to fix, who's doing my magic. But do your zikr, do your practices, do your connection, they'll clean what needs to be cleaned, whether it's spiritual or whether you have something in your home or premises that's of, a, of difficulty for you, then you'll have a dream that get rid of that thing. So that's the difference is that for magic we do our zikrs, do our practices and, and make your connection strong, that is the greatest defense against any type of difficulty and Allah defends the believers, inshaAllah. As Sayyidi As Salaam wa rahmatullah Is it true that our shaykhs <coughs> advise us not to wear the red color? Is there reality behind that? Yeah, I don't know if your shaykh advised you to do that. Our shaykh, your shaykh or my shaykh is different. If a shaykh told you not to do that, if there's a reason, then that's of a personal nature. Red is generally a hot color, so it can make somebody heated. And if they have a heated personality, it may make them more heated, more angry quickly. So every color has its reality. So it depends, it's not a, a general statement, it's not written by the shaykhs down the line that don't wear red. It's they come across a certain person and say, I don't think you should wear red. That's probably because the person is heated and the red will ignite them to become more heated and more aggressive, inshaAllah. As Salaam Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah What type of stone or ring should we wear for protection? For protection is turquoise, inshaAllah. Firuza, the turquoise is a protection for nazar, takes the eyes of people and they can wear a necklace for the ladies, a ring for ladies and men. And turquoise serves the purpose of deflecting the eyes and bad eyes because people look to it and then they're deflected by it, inshaAllah. Aqeeq is then for a warm heart, excuse me. For warmness in the heart is aqeeq. Cornelian, inshaAllah. That brings a softness to the heart, inshaAllah. Uh, As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Do we only have to do the first part of the Naqshbandi awrad or both parts? 
<laughs> it's the first part. <laughs> Both parts. <laughs> you have to do the zikr, the long zikr. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you can do what you can do. So alhamdulillah, it's there to be done. If you can't do it, you don't have the time, you don't have the will to do it, then you know, everybody to their, to their ability. It doesn't really take that much time when you have the tasbih that's 200, making 1500 Allahs doesn't take but a few minutes. Allah, 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 Allah. You said 10 minutes, 15 minutes and that zikr will be finished inshaAllah. 500 salawat is one, two rounds and half. So it goes by faster than what, what somebody looks at and thinks it's going to take a long time, inshaAllah. <coughs> Good. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzatama yasifoon. Wa salaamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Illa sharaf al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa 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 alayhi wa s